When I was in third grade, I knit my first sweater, and it looked like this. Even though it wasn't even close to being perfect, it sparked the beginning of my interest in crafting. From there on, my love for the handicrafts accompanied me as I grew older. But it wasn't until recently that I really understood how much this skill had served me. In our school and work-centric lives, we're not asked about our hobbies much. In fact, it almost seems like a bad thing to be spending time on activities that we do for fun. Even at the dinner table, our conversations are mainly focused on, so, how did your day at work go? Or, what did you do during school today? When we do our hobbies, we feel guilty. We feel stressed thinking about the assignments waiting to be completed. And sometimes we feel pressured to stop. But when we work, we feel right, even when it does get mentally or physically exhausting. However, this outlook can blind us from the actual purpose that hobbies are meant to serve. Hobbies add balance to and create dimension in our lives. They teach us virtues that help us achieve our biggest goals. And they teach us valuable skills that help us create change in this world. For me, that hobby is knitting. And I was able to use the skill of knitting to create change in the Middle East. Like I said, I grew up knitting. In third grade, my teacher had us knit all the time in class because she said it helped us develop our brains. That year, I also learned several new knitting patterns from my grandparents. In Turkey, where my family's from, knitting is a really common skill, so almost all the girls learn it growing up. I was able to use this humble skill to connect with my relatives in Turkey, and through this shared interest, I had a piece of home to remember. Now, I'm in high school. I still knit, but now I lead a global movement based on the skill of knitting. Now, how does that work? How does a high schooler find herself in such a position? And how does she use knitting of all skills to accomplish that? Well, it began when I learned about the Syrian refugee crisis, a humanitarian issue that was taking place in Turkey. Due to the internal conflicts in Syria, millions of citizens were being forced to move out. Many of them fled into neighboring countries like Turkey, Lebanon, Jordan, and Iraq. Others crossed the Mediterranean in makeshift boats, risking their lives for a new one in Sweden or Germany. Over 3.5 million Syrians moved into Turkey alone. Children, mothers, students, lawyers, mechanics, professors. I couldn't believe it. In an effort to provide support for these refugee families, I I picked up my knitting needles and favorite yarn and spent my spare time making little hats and sweaters. I even got my grandmother, mother, and cousin involved and managed to turn them into knitting machines. In fact, I practically turned my entire household into a knitting factory. But sometime into this endeavor, despite the hours that all of us would spend knitting together, I realized that we weren't making much progress. After all, how much could one family of crafters accomplish if they were trying to knit for millions of people. So I opened a website and created a shipping address and just posted online, letting people know that we are collecting handmade items to donate to Syrian refugees and that they could join us in this mission. I called it Woolly Wishes because we were sending our best wishes in the form of warm, comforting handmade gifts, praying for the welfare of their families. I didn't know what to expect and didn't really think that others would want to support some high school student all the way in California. But the results shocked me. Not before long, I was receiving packages from across the United States. New York, Florida, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Texas, Alabama, New Jersey, they all came flooding in. And then I started receiving international donations from countries like Canada and Australia, I was so surprised. And every time we'd open up a package that had been shipped to us, I and whoever I was opening it up with would not even believe the amount of effort that people would put in. From the most intricately knitted socks, to the most precious of toys, and to the most delicate scarves, we received over 1,000 donations in less than six months. Of course, it wasn't easy. Especially early on, many people surrounding me questioned whether others would actually donate. We were brand new, had no connections in the broader knitting world, and had insignificant statistics on our work so far. The first couple of months were extremely slow, 
In fact, we probably only received one or two packages a month. But I still remember coming home and opening up those packages, even if it was only one or two, with so much excitement and awe at what people had created. Only later on did the number of incoming shipments begin to accelerate. Just two weeks later, I also remember coming home to my mother, and this time showing her not one, but 20 packages that we had just received. As I look back in retrospect, I realize that throughout this endeavor, knitting didn't only provide the basis of the organization, but it also helped me foster the commitment and dedication that I needed to bring complete strangers together to accomplish this big mission. When knitting, we're forced to dedicate our attention to a single project. If we fail to commit for just one moment while working on any given project, we may make a mistake that we might not even realize until rows later. And let me tell you, it is not fun having to go back seven rows later when you finally notice that mistake and try to fix that stitch. In addition, finishing a single knitting project can take weeks, sometimes months. And although it is sometimes easy to get bored of our projects, we have to fight that temptation and push through until the finishing line. For this reason, concentration and dedication are key to becoming a successful knitter. And ultimately, that's how this humble hobby helped me grow woolly wishes onto an international level. Now, you don't have to become the knitting addict that I've become, but it is important to find the hobbies that interest you, whether it's reading, training for a marathon, or sketching. Because what's beautiful about these hobbies is that when applied correctly, they have this powerful ability to equip you with the skills that you need to achieve your biggest goals in life. Thank you.